What is up, people? So today, I'm gonna to try to make this a short lesson, but I get so many questions about practicing. How to practice, what to practice, all of that stuff. So today, I'm gonna to tackle it so that I can at least have a place to refer people to get an overview and a general kind of opinion on how I practice. Now, this video will specifically be about how I practice, not what I practice. Um, that will be in kind of a different video. I think I'll do that down the road if you all want to see it. So put it in the comments if that's something that interests you, exactly what I practice. But today I want to talk about how I practice and more specifically how I structure my practice. Several years ago in high school, I listened to, uh, maybe it was college, I listened to a masterclass by Chris Coleman and he talked about his ABC practice method. <laughs> So this practice method is very, very much kind of inspired and based off of some of the things that Chris Coleman talks about. Before I talk about how I actually break out these three sections, I want to stress that it's really important, maybe the most important thing about practicing in your practice session, before you sit down to practice, you should already have planned out what you're going to practice. So whether or not you break out your practice session in these three things like I'm saying or whatever, if you wait until the moment of practicing to decide what you're going to practice, you're going to lose focus, you're not really going to know what to practice or what you should be practicing or whether or not you're seeing progress. You're just going to get really confused and then your practice time won't be as productive and won't be as focused, which ends up in you not learning as much and not getting as as much out of that practice time as you could. So I think it's really important to no matter what you're doing, before you sit down, plan out what you're going to be practicing. I always structure my practice sessions in three sections. The nice thing about that is if you're practicing for 30 minutes or an hour or three hours, you always cover the same base material, which means you're always getting a well-rounded practice session. So let's break down the three sections one by one. And again, these are evenly broken down. If you have an hour, you're going to have three 20-minute sections. If you have 30 minutes, you're going to have three 10-minute sections, three hours, three hour-long sections. And you're going to, I always base my practice in these three kind of areas. Okay, so this first section is all about, I call it like technique and maintenance. It's going to be something that gets your blood flowing. It's the first section of this practice time and it's going to be something that gets both your hands and your feet flowing. It gets the blood moving. It gets you kind of all warmed up and ready to do whatever the rest of your practice time looks like. So for me, what that looks like is a thing that I talk about a lot called the subdivision pyramid. And almost all of my students have heard about this. Uh, even a lot of you probably, I have a um, 180 drums lesson that kind of talks about this. So if you want to know more specifically about the subdivision pyramid, I'll put a link in the description and you can check out more information on that. This subdivision pyramid that I use helps me work rudiments and helps me not only work rudiments, so I'm focusing on technique with those rudiments, but it also, in doing that, it's a way to work these rudiments so that I'm not just working on my hands, I'm working on coordination and my feet at the same time. So I'll do the subdivision pyramid for a little bit, get my body, my coordination, my hands flowing. That maintenance part of it is really about speed, finding some BPMs that are right at my limit and trying to approach that or surpass that. And then I'll also not only work the coordination and the hand speed with the rudiments, but I'll also usually have in this first section a kick drum exercise that pushes my foot technique and make sure that that is warmed up and ready to jump into the other two sections of my practice time. So that's really the first section. It's all about technique and maintenance and speed and warming up to make sure that no matter what I do after that, my, my, the blood is flowing and I'm good. Like I said, this is going to be divided up evenly over the course of your 
practice time. So if you have an hour, that will be this first section will take up 20 minutes. And I literally set a timer that goes off so that I know when 20 minutes is up, okay, it's on to the next section. So section number two, I don't have a like a super great term for this, but I call it the nitty gritty section. This is gonna be the bulk of your work that you're doing for exercises. This is gonna be where you start working on those. If the first section was about maintenance and rudiments and warming up and you're not necessarily working on things you don't know in that first section, you're just working on getting things tighter and quicker. In this second section, it's gonna be things that you don't know at all, that you have never ever played before that is just brand new to you. So this is, can be where you are working on some advanced coordination exercises. This can be where you're working on um, some jazz independence or some jazz vocabulary or a solo transcription. I really like the Gary Chafee sticking patterns. This can be where you're applying that to the drum set. This is going to be the nitty gritty section where you're taking things you don't know and you're breaking them down and learning them and applying them in a very almost scientific way. So that's the nitty gritty section. You're really, this is the bulk of what a lot of people talk about when they practice. And this is just the, the sitting there, slowly playing something to get the coordination down and then speeding it up to make sure you're comfortable with it. This is the scientific part about practicing. And this is also the section that a lot of people skip. A lot of people hate going through, playing things slowly, being repetitive, but this is really important. When you're learning something brand new, which practice should be about playing stuff that's brand new to you. You know, obviously in that first section, you're warming up, you're playing stuff that you're kind of familiar with, but you're pushing your limits with it. It's not just, I'm gonna play paradiddles as slow and, you know, as uncomplicated as I always do. You're still pushing yourself in that first section, but this second section is about all new material, the nitty gritty stuff. And if, if your practice sessions always sound good and it always sounds, you're always playing the same stuff in your practice session, you're not actually practicing. You have to play stuff that you've never played before in your practice to get better. And that's what this second section is all about. So it's going to be where you're working through your method books. It's going to be where you're doing the nitty gritty stuff in, it's going to be painful. And that's why it's in the middle, because if you start off with that stuff, it's going to be discouraging. And if you end with it, you're going to leave discouraged. So you put it in the middle because it's the hardest work that you'll do in your practice time. So the first section, technique and maintenance, pushing that speed, building, bodybuilding, working out, Second section is the nitty gritty. You're dissecting stuff. You're taking it slow. You're working it up to tempo. You're working out of those method books. And now the third section. And this third section is you're, you're going to try to apply all of what you've done to music. And obviously it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. You can't immediately take something that you just like, you just learned how to play five seconds ago and then start applying it musically. But this third section is something where I usually try to look big picture, what have I been working on for the last three months, and apply that in some kind of musical way that's less let me read this out of a book and more let me think critically about how I can start applying some of what I've been working on recently. So for example, if I've been working on like linear fills in my practice time, in this third section, instead of working on specific linear fills, what I might do is I might put on a song and try to play the linear fills over this song. And that's that's forcing me out of exercise mode and into how does this apply to music mode. Another thing I'll do is, again, if I'm practicing linear fills in that nitty gritty part, and I have been for a while, what I might do in that third section is, instead of taking specific linear fills, I might in general just try to play linear fills in that third section to a metronome that uh, drops out randomly. I have these click tracks that I built that will play time and then randomly drop out for two bars or four bars. And I might use this third section to practice linear fills in a general sense and then also play it to a metronome that drops out because that simulates a lot of the... Um, sometimes you're playing to a click track that actually does drop out. I've been at festivals where it's raining and RF frequencies were bad so the in-ears were dropping in and out. <laughs> So it simulates that, but it also just kind of having a click track that drops out simulates the kind of panic of a live performance of where so much can happen that we don't 
we can't anticipate, right? Um, if we can't, if we're playing and all we can hear in our ears is electric guitar because the monitor guy accidentally hit something, we're going to be panicking in that moment. And it's always good to play little musical games like having a metronome that drops out to really test beyond can I play this, but can I play this in a real-life situation that is musical or is challenging more so than in the very controlled environment we have our practice time in. That is the structure of how I practice. And I know it's very, very general, but that's kind of the point. Um, everyone is different. Everyone's at a different skill set and everyone has a different focus. So I like having a big principle that anyone can apply to their practice method as opposed to assign people, this is the exact thing you need to work on or something like that because we're all very different in what we need and what we want out of practice time. So these three sections, the technique, the warm up, the maintenance section, the nitty gritty section, and the musically applied, applying things to music section, all three of those, if you practice those and commit to hitting each of those sections every time you practice, you're always going to be playing and covering as much as you can and making your practice time a lot more well-rounded. If you always sit down and practice rudiments and that's all you practice, you're never gonna get better at playing music. And same thing, if you always just sit down and jam and try to play your linear fills over your jam tracks, you're never actually going to expand your fill vocabulary by learning some jazz or work on rudiments, you know? So I find it really important in practice time to always cover more than one kind of application, one area of study. And that's why these three sections, I think if you hit these in your practice section, will do you a lot of good. So like I said, that's the general how I practice, the three sections that I practice based on kind of what I learned from Chris Coleman and a bunch of other people. Take that into the world. I hope it helps. Put down in the comments what you practice, how you practice. If you want to see a lesson on exactly what I practice, let me know because I'll try to put that out as soon as I can if that's something that interests you. So comment below about practice or drums or transcriptions or anything. I always try to respond to those and then hit subscribe if you like this. Um, I'm coming out with more and more videos all the time so I wanna make these videos about you and what you wanna see. So hit subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you in the next one.